Yeah, well, first of all, I, you know, I started publicly advocating uh, for people to buy gold and silver in the late 1990s. Um, and when I did that, you know, gold was under three, four hundred dollars an ounce. Um, and, you know, now it's over two thousand dollars an ounce. So a lot of people think, well, gold hasn't gone anywhere. It actually has gone up quite a bit if you if you trace the beginning of the bull market to around 2001. So over the past 20 years, um, it's gone up quite a bit. Now, of course, gold went up from under uh, four, 400 to almost 2000 in 2011. So over that last 10 years or so or 12 years, gold hasn't made much headway. It's kind of digested those gains, consolidated. And I think it's built a great base and it's headed for another leg higher, much higher. I think the order of magnitude will be similar to what we had in the 1970s with gold, where gold went from $35 an ounce in the late 60s to over 800 in the early 80s. So that, that's the type of move that, that I expect. Today, we're diving into the insights of renowned economist Peter Schiff. Backed by historical data, Schiff emphasizes the significant rise in gold prices since the late 90s. Gold, once under dollar 400 an ounce, has soared to over $2,000 today, marking substantial gains over the past two decades. Schiff points out that the gold market has experienced a consolidation phase in recent years, but he believes it has built a solid base for another upward surge. Drawing parallels to the 1970s, Schiff predicts a substantial increase in gold prices, mirroring the era when gold climbed from $35 to over $800 per ounce. His analysis delves into the macroeconomic landscape, referencing the U.S. departure from the gold standard in 1971. Schiff contends that the world might be on the verge of moving away from the dollar standard, echoing the consequences of the 70s. As the dollar loses value, Schiff foresees a potential depreciation or devaluation, leading to economic shifts reminiscent of the past. And what, what happened in the 70s was we, we went off the gold standard in 1971 uh, because we ran big deficits, uh, printed too much money, uh, was you know the war on poverty, the Great Society, Vietnam, going to the moon, you know, uh, Kennedy, Johnson era, uh, Nixon. Uh, and, and we just were, this, you know, profligate. I mean, not by today's standards. I mean, you know, we were pretty conservative if you want to compare it to modern day. But, we, you know, we could no longer stay on the gold standard because the gold standard was incompatible with this big government. I mean, gold would have reined in uh, excess government spending. Uh, and so we went off the gold standard rather than cutting government spending and, and you know, and, and, and balancing the books. Uh, you know, we, we took the easy way out. And then, you know, the world devalued the dollar because it was no longer backed by anything. Uh, and so the dollar lost a tremendous amount of purchasing power. That's why you needed 800 to buy an ounce of gold. But it was, you know, other currencies, the, you know, the yen you used to get 360 yen for the dollar. And it went down to like maybe 150 at that time. You used to buy more than four Deutschmarks for the dollar. Uh, the dollar went down about one and a half. Uh, oil was three dollars a barrel in 1970, it was $30 a barrel in 1980. It wasn't that oil got more expensive, it's just that the dollar lost value. We just printed a lot of dollars, and so you needed more dollars uh, to buy oil. And um, the average American's paycheck was so diminished by the inflation tax, that's the real reason that you had a huge influx of married women into the workforce, because in the 1960s, uh, very few married women worked. Their husbands supported them. Uh, but by the 1980s, you had a lot of women that were working because their husband's paychecks didn't go far enough because the money lost a lot of value. Prices went up. And I think we're going to see a similar uh, depreciation, devaluation, however you want to define it, of, of the dollar in the next leg of this journey. Because I think the next thing that's going to happen, we went off the gold standard in 1971. The next thing that's going to happen is the world is going to go off the dollar standard. And you know, even though we went off the gold standard, the dollar remained the reserve currency, even though it wasn't backed by anything anymore. And that provided Americans with a gigantic subsidy because we could just print money and then buy stuff with it without having to make anything because we could take the money we printed and exchange it for the goods that people made in other countries. 
using, you know, factories and labor and land and all these resources. We didn't have to use any resources. We just conjured money into thin air and we got all this stuff. And Americans didn't have to save. We could just spend everything we earned uh, while the rest of the world, you know, did all the heavy lifting. So we've had this giant subsidy uh, that has been propping up the economy. And what I've been warning about, even going back to the Greenspan era, was that we were going to lose this privilege because of the profligacy. Diving deeper into the financial insights from Peter Schiff, the data paints a concerning picture of the U.S. economy. Since 1987, Schiff has been critical of monetary policies, especially during Alan Greenspan's tenure. The national debt, which stood at two, three trillion in the early 90s, has skyrocketed to a staggering 34 trillion, increasing by a trillion every quarter. Schiff highlights the government's reliance on short-term debt, akin to his warnings about adjustable rate mortgages in the past. Now, with $1.10, 12 trillion worth of treasuries maturing in 2024, the challenge arises as these need to be rolled over at higher interest rates. The Federal Reserve, once a major buyer, is selling treasuries, and foreign entities are following suit. According to Schiff, this points to a looming sovereign debt crisis, potentially triggering a US dollar crisis. Against this backdrop, Schiff sees gold as a crucial asset for investors seeking a hedge against the impending economic challenges. You know, I was a big critic of Alan Greenspan's uh, tenure going back to 1987. You know, I, I remember I wrote him letters. I still have the letters I sent him. He answered me. I was just out of college. But I didn't like his response to the 1987 stock market crash. And I criticized him for what he did, and he defended it to me. Uh, but that was the beginning. And then he kept repeating those mistakes up until uh, the policies that inflated the housing bubble that he enacted in, in 2001. And then he passed the baton to Bernanke, and the bubble popped on his watch, 2007, 2008. Uh, but those monetary mistakes have continued uh, under Yellen and now under Powell. And in the meantime, you know, the national debt has gone from, I don't know, maybe it was a two or three trillion. I forget where it was when I wrote that letter to Greenspan. I know it was one trillion in 1980 when, when Reagan came in. But now the national debt is 34 trillion. Uh, but it's rising by a trillion a quarter. I mean, even though the official budget deficits are about two trillion, which is still enormous, if you actually look at the national debt, Every quarter, it goes up by a trillion. So the government's borrowing $4 trillion a year to fund uh, its operations. Uh, that's a lot of bonds. Meanwhile, I I've been a, a big critic over the last 10 years over the way our debt has been financed with short-term debt, the way I criticized um, you know, the, uh, people for taking out adjustable rate mortgages. I mean, not really. I didn't criticize people for taking out those mortgages. I criticize the banks for being dumb enough to issue those mortgages and the U.S. government for get, putting the taxpayer on the hook by guaranteeing them because I knew what would happen uh, when the rates went up. And, you know, we got the housing collapse and the financial crisis. But now all this debt that the government accumulated when rates were, you know, 25 basis points is now maturing. You've got 10, 12 trillion dollars worth of treasuries that mature in 2024. That has to be rolled over at, at 500 basis points, whatever the rates are. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve is selling treasuries. They used to be a big buyer. The so-called Social Security trust funds, they're selling treasuries, too, because the government doesn't collect enough in payroll taxes to cover the cost of Social Security. And that deficit gets wider every week as more people drop out of the labor force, more people retire. Uh, and, and, and so the trust funds are selling treasuries. And the other big buyers, you know, the Japanese, the Chinese, you know, Saudis, whoever, Russian, they're not buying anymore. In fact, they're selling. And I think they have a lot more treasuries to sell. So I think we're we're very, getting very close to a sovereign debt crisis, uh, which will precipitate a, a U.S. dollar crisis. As we conclude today's exploration of Peter Schiff's insights, remember the key points. Gold has surged since the 90s and Schiff anticipates further growth. Historical events like going off the gold standard in 1971 shape his predictions. From Greenspan to the present, Schiff criticizes monetary policies, warns of a growing national debt, now at $34 trillion, and signals a potential sovereign debt crisis. 
with treasuries maturing in 2024 and the Fed selling, a US dollar crisis looms. If you found today's insights valuable, subscribe, like, and share your thoughts in the comments below.